Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Clone Wars retrospective. Oh boy, I am the adventurous Trask now. Uh, I am the Night Brother Taylor Field. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not guessed, we are going to be reviewing uh, season four of the Man. Oh my God, <laughs> the Mandalorian. <laughs> season four of the Mandalorian. <laughs> I'm all over the map. Okay, I've had a rough day. Uh, let's see. Uh, when we're filming this, it's Christmas gift buying time, and I had a really tough time. Hour on a phone with some guy I knew nothing. We are reviewing in honor of the Clone Wars retrospective. We are reviewing every single episode of the Clone Wars. We are at season four right now. I can't remember the episode numbers we're going to be doing, but go it's back. Uh I think it's 13 onwards. We're do, well, yeah, we're going to do four in this and then five in the next one. So. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, go back. We've reviewed every single episode. February is when the show is going to be coming back. So check out all the episodes. Get ready with us for the Clone Wars retrospective. Taylor, do you have anything to say about the, these episodes or in general? You know. Um, no. I, I, did a <laughs> I did a quick like uh, rewatch, but I've been watching these at the same time as Rebels. So I'm... My my memory is like it's being convoluted a little bit. So when you do your Great. when you do your little like synopsis of the intro of like each uh, episode, I'll catch on quick. What if I don't do it this time? Then we are nope. fucked. We have wow. to cancel the show. Cancel the show. Okay, I'm pulling up right here. We know that you can't. You wouldn't do this. You love doing this, naming off the weird alien planets and stuff. <laughs> I hate that part, but. <laughs> Okay, uh, this is an episode I think you maybe uh, warned me a little about. So we're starting. So we are doing episode 14, 15, 16, and seventeen this episode, mm. and we got a lot of good stuff going on. I will say between this episode and then the five we're gonna cover later on, this has been the time where I've liked the show the most. This was a bunch of solid episodes back to back, no filler. Maybe this first episode we're gonna talk about is a little filler, a friend in need, but most of them are good. I had good moments, and obviously there's like a big thing it ends the season on, but. Uh, Liked all the stuff that's going on so far. So, episode 14, a friend in need, a peace conference between the Separatists and Republic delegates is interrupted by Lux Bonteri, the son of the late Separatist Senator Mina Bonteri, <laughs> season 3, episode 10. There you go. Soon after, he involves Ahsoka in his dangerous search to find justice for his mother's death, which subsequently... Sub subsequently? <laughs> I don't even know that word. <laughs> subsequently, subsequently leads to Ahsoka crossing paths with Vizsla and the Death Watch. Uh, what do you think about this episode, Taylor Field? Uh, I like Lux. You know, I always feel like I can associate myself with him pretty well, and <laughs> I can see it. He's uh, he's just he's an interesting character, and I like how he kind of like Shanghai, you know, Ahsoka onto this. Um, adventure and he he's not welcome really anymore he's wanted by the separatists and i think it's very interesting how he just chose to ally himself with death watch and i don't get why death watch was the way that they were in this episode i feel like mm. uh it, it didn't make sense that how it would benefit them and their cause because usually death watch there at least later on they i feel like that it's, it's a little bit different how they act and progress but uh at least in this scenario, um, I didn't I didn't fully enjoy them and how they operated, but uh, I liked how uh, Ahsoka was pretending to be like uh, his wife and all that mm. kind of stuff. That was that was kind of funny. Um, yeah, yeah. I think this is my least favorite episode out of these four, and then the five we'll talk about later. It's not a bad episode. It's just enjoyable. It's just kind of a bot, not even a bottle. Episode. Well. Kind of as a bottle episode. Not much happens. Just contained to this. It was nice to see Vizsla back because that's Favreau, right? Oh, yeah. So it's funny in the timing when we're recording this. We just uh, not a few weeks ago saw Mandalorian season no season one, episode three. Yeah. And uh, Favreau's back set playing Paz, Paz, Paz Vizsla or Paz. Do we know? Paz. 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 One of them. So uh, that was fun. It was fun that we were when the Mandalorian's happening right now. We got right back into Mandalorian episode. He has all good stuff. I do, uh, like, I can officially say, like, I've liked Ahsoka for a little bit, but now it's just, I don't feel, the earlier seasons when I wasn't the biggest fan of her and I think they weren't doing a great job with her character or they were just fine-tuning it, when if it was just an Ahsoka episode, I'd not tune out but not be as interested, we wouldn't care. Where now I do care and I am interested to see what's happening. I like the little fun back and forth she had with him. He's on just a revenge mission. I feel like she maybe should have tried a few more times to talk him, like, down a little bit but then again anakin's her master who's just a vengeful motherfucker who they don't even put a leash on at all it's so frustrating but so maybe that's why but there was fun where she like 
and they have to kiss when you know these people come in. But I it's feel probably like her first kiss. I think. <sighs> Maybe I don't know. I, it could be. Uh, I don't know what she's doing to Plo Koon or not. But I, oh. I, I, um, yeah, I think they kind of stuff. There's like a mini attraction. You can spoil. Does he come back at any point in the future? Uh, off the top of my head, I I don't remember him because it felt like they set up for more ventures with those two, and she like maybe romantically liked him a little bit. Yeah, I think there's, there's the like a Han Leia thing going on. I think there is. Uh, I think there's there's one scenario, and I think the next season where he does come back. Okay. Uh, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But I think he does come back. Well, I can't correct you if you're wrong. So correct Taylor in the comments. If you like what we do here, head over to YouTube, you know, video feeds, all the whole shebang. Just subscribe. We got lots of Star Wars stuff in the past, probably when this episode came out, Rise of Skywalker. But if you like what we do, leave us a review. We're getting closer to 200 milestones. So leave us a written review on Apple, iTunes, podcast. That's work. I wish they never changed it. You know, I'm not used to saying Apple podcasts. Uh, let's see if I got any more notes. Because, yeah, I think this is a pretty basic episode. Guy's out for revenge. Ahsoka gets tangled in the adventure. They go on the adventure to do a Mandalorians. Some good fight scenes in here. That's mm-hmm. really about it. Uh, let's see. Somehow Lux had a tracking device on uh, on Dooku. Yeah, much like uh, the Mandalorian show right now, we don't know how tracking devices exactly work. So there's one moment that I, I get it. Because her life was... Uh, <laughs> Her life was in danger, but there was a moment where I believe it was the Mandalorians all had her pinned down at one point, Ahsoka, and they're pointing her guns, and then she jumps up and she span and just... She de- took out a bunch of those fuckers. She decapitated all their heads. Oh, one yeah. Suit. So it's not... I'm not saying she's wrong for doing it, but it did catch me off guard because it just felt so violent, especially the same thing with this show. It's still kitty, but... That was just a decapitation, not even a slice. That took me out of it. Not in a bad way, just like I was like, whoa, like that just happened. And it shows that Ahsoka's now she's definitely she's not the Ahsoka she's Palpatine's used to be. looking at her now. Well, <laughs> yeah, she's like cross not across the path, because she's killing people that are armed and fre- threatening her life, but it's just like before I felt there would have been a, you know, oh, I don't want to kill these people only if I have to. Now it's just like, no, she'll just slice these people down if she has to. So that took me off guard. Yeah, no, that's um, I've seen and sent gifts of that. It's just super badass. If we're just like three sixty spinning and taking out all those guys, all the mm-hmm. Mandalorians heads off, you know, full on Django Windu moment. So Django Windu moment times ten or times whatever. Oh yeah. And then the other thing I was gonna ask you, do you? So at one point, then she gets in a fight with Vizsla at the end. I think that was all choreographed well. I don't like the animation for the dark saber. I really don't. I know it's supposed to be a little bit different, but the way when it's clashing, the way when he's moving it, it just doesn't look right, and it feels that it doesn't fit in the world they've set it with the animation. And like I said, I know they're going for a special look, but I don't. I don't like the look. I wish it was more lightsabery. So yeah, I'm. I'm well, not, that's I'm not the a fan thing. Like it. it's it's design uh, from my knowledge. Like it's it's. It was designed by a Mandalorian who was who became a Jedi, basically. Mm. So that's why it has not a full on aesthetic of a lightsaber, but it is a lightsaber, but with a Mandalorian design and aesthetic to it. That's why it's so different from your standard lightsabers. Yeah, um, I get that. I just, I just, do you like the animation? Like when he's swinging it around, I just don't think it looks. Personally, I, I, I liked it the more I saw it get used okay. in certain circumstances. I've only seen it twice so far. Yeah, I believe it gets. I I find that it gets better. Um, it's much better in Rebels, I will mm. say. Um, but yeah. Okay. What would you rate this episode? Uh, I would give it a what is it a five? Isn't that what we were doing? We do thumbs up. I'm we, pretty oh, sure. We don't we? Th- on yeah, we do two minute. thumbs up, one thumb up, thumb like this, one thumb down, and two thumbs down. I'll give a it thumb in the middle. I'll give it one thumb up. Yeah, I'd give it one thumb up too. Just a, like a good basic episode. So, uh, before. Uh, so I'm going to read out the plot oh, <laughs> yeah. for this episode. And there's a lot to talk about here, but then I have a question before we get into anything. So episode 15, Deception. Obi-Wan fakes his own death and goes undercover as Raku Harding in a Republic prison in order to gather information on the plot to kidnap Chancellor Palpatine from a conflict named Moralo Eval. Moralo Eval. Moralo Eval. While there, he learns another prisoner, notorious bounty hunter Cad Bane, is also involved. Meanwhile, Anakin seeks vengeance over his death of his former master. So, uh, can I just ask you, this is going to be in reverse, what would you rate this episode? This one, I give it a five. So, two thumbs? Oh, oh yeah, two thumbs. Easy. Yeah, you want to know why I know this? Because, so we've talked about this many times on the Star Wars podcast, whether it's Cantina, whether it's the Star Wars movie reviews, commentary tracks, or the Mandalorian reviews right now. 
Taylor will love anything that alludes to any other Star Wars canon. So hang on. So the reason he's not going to say it, he's going, oh, I don't know. But <laughs> the reason Rogue One's the best Star Wars movie, because the Vader scene, the reason why he loves the Han Solo movie, because the Darth Maul scene, the, there's so many things in the Mandalorian where he'll give it all the episodes so far. We've done four. They've all been five out of fives. And he'd be like, oh, because that ATSD, oh, because that. So it's always something. So the se- so Obi-Wan <laughs> fakes his death in this episode, right? And they do a little funeral for him. They put the sheet over him. And then they start to zoom in on Anakin. And what happens is Vader's theme starts to subtly <laughs> play. And Anakin is looking evil. And the second that happened, I'm like, I know Taylor's going to give this a perfect score. I just know it. And I figure out the algorithm for him. So, like, it's the same it, It's the same way before with before Episode 9 came out. I was telling him Palpatine could come back and there's a good shot. And he's like, uh, I don't know if I would like that. And now he's all over the Palpatine <laughs> Sith talk. He's like, oh, Palpatine. I love Palpatine. I can't wait for episode nine so he can say no but he can't resist it you know it's just like one of those porns where there's like (laughs) you know how the guys in that can just never resist anything they may be like with the hottest person (laughs) in the world but then like i don't know uh, earth like some mud monster might come up that's made from goosebumps that guy and he'll be on the desk be like oh you want some and he puts that leg and just like oh you're such a bad boss and then all of a sudden the guy just becomes a monster he's like ripping his shirt oh come here that's taylor he'll be like no no i don't think i need that cannon or easter egg oh yeah you do and then darth maul ignites his lightsaber and taylor just rips off his clothes and lets darth maul have his way with him so I knew this was going to be a five out of five. You want to defend yourself because you know I'm right. I I will in the sense that uh, this <laughs> this episode you can't you can't oh I, I can I got I I I've been preparing for this. So this <laughs> I've uh, been preparing this episode basically with Anakin, you know, getting that kind of like nod towards you know the Imperial March Darth Vader's theme and Anakin, you know, his dark side tendency. It basically also implies about how even. And this is, again, something that Palpatine in the long run used against Anakin, where he his faith in the Jedi that you learn in Revenge of the Sith has been rattled and shaken a bit. And it obviously goes to show, like, with something just drastic as this, his best friend, his mentor since he was little, Obi-Wan Kenobi, lying to him and faking I don't faking think they were death. best friends the whole time. I'm not going to subscribe to that. They really were annoying. They, well, they really were like brothers. I-, I wouldn't say an Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones, they fucking hated each other. Well, this is well, after Attack of the Clones. I know, but that's you no. Know, you said since they've met, they've been best friends or whatever. Like, no, 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 they haven't been. Like okay, that. fair enough. Unless but I misheard, but they've, it's they've been a rocky gone, relationship. But yeah, but they've gone through a lot and enough where you know he would trust Obi Wan with his life. You know, he would do whatever he could fair. for him. And then it came to the point where Obi Wan lied and faked his death, and Anakin mm-hmm. legit thought that Obi Wan was dead. And uh, I don't blame him for wanting, you know, revenge. And again, this is something that shows, okay, the Jedi lied to him and Obi-Wan lied to him. You know, Anakin, and it's his downfall, is his faith and his, you know, um, how much he cares for his friends. And when that gets taken away or uh, compromised, then it compromises him in a very deep and uh, penetrative way. And it uh, it really affects him, you know, because his inner circle is Ahsoka, Padme, and Obi Wan, and Sheev is just sitting there, you know. And she's definitely in the inner circle. Oh yeah. So when Obi Wan gets, you know, compromised, you know, it's it. If I was, you know, dating my girlfriend and she dies and fakes her death, and I went out to hunt her murderer, and then she's like, "Oh, I just faked my death to take the place of my murderer." to protect Prime Minister Trudeau, I'd be like, well, that's fucking bullshit. Really? I'd be pretty choked because I would I wouldn't want... in this time span. In this time span, this happened like... This episode, these because these next three episodes are all linked together, the ones we're going to talk about. It happened over a day, a week. It'd be different if your significant other faked their death for like a year, and then you might be a little mad. But this was only for a few days to get. But some still, if you go to the funeral uh, and everything, if they I'm if they s- told me, I'd put on a convincing show. Like, oh no, she died. I'm not saying he shouldn't be mad. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying like you being like I fucking freak out. I don't know if he. I think Anakin is a little hothead. I actually do like what they did here. That's not, and even then the music. I don't think I think everything was handled well here i think even better than it has been in the movies as far as the prequels because i always say this anakin's arcs and the prequels are some of the worst writing of all time so that's a great thing so this to me made sense of all the council's lying to him his partner's lying to him that that all worked for me I, and I, I i also think that he this was more just against you i think he actually got over it pretty quickly and wasn't mad but you were like yeah oh no you're not you're not forgiving madison 
Well, I'd be similar to Anakin. Anakin wouldn't forgive very easily. He, no. he he definitely did not, I would say, forgive easily. I think he moved past it pretty quickly, to be For honest. the sake of the show, annoyed. I think yeah. they did it for kids' sake, you know, watching this. But <laughs> I think where show, you can't but, but where he ends up turning to the dark side and, you know, not fully, you know, being happy with Obi Wan and happy yeah, with the but council. That's not, this is that just one of those count, one of these are one of the pillars of the many that are knocked over and Canon doesn't towards count. That. Canon doesn't count. Canon remember hashtag but this doesn't counts. matter. But uh, this counts, but it, it doesn't it doesn't have anything to do like when he's li- when yelling to him in episode three, he's like, Liar about peace and about and remember that time you faked your death? This means nothing to that story. Oh it does. It's just no. like when Obi Wan fell into that uh nest of Gand or Gundarks and uh, Luke's or Anakin had to say uh, pull him out of there. But they said that in the movies. They did. Yeah, they but it's just another one of those pillars. But it's the little one that was knocked over. But the movie doesn't matter because that's the thing. Clone Wars, it is. Oh, it's, the movie doesn't matter below. No, me. sorry, the the show doesn't matter because yeah, Clone Wars is nice, but sometimes I just feel like they're trying to fix the holes of the prequel and put bandages on it, and they can try, but it still doesn't make Revenge of the Sith any better. For Revenge you, of the does. Sith is a fantastic movie. No, it's oh, pretty, it's so good. It's Best of the bad. trilogy. It's pretty bad. I'll give you that. It's still a pretty bad movie, but I'll give you that. Um, let's see. We talk about a lot there. Yeah. I liked everything with Anakin this episode. I was surprised when he shaved his own head and everything that we won. Uh, I didn't like that in the next few episodes later, he completely had a full head of hair and his beard was back. It grows normal. back real quick. Yeah, I didn't know that force power existed. So oh, yeah. That's cool. So, yeah, But that was fun. The, the other reason why I liked this episode in the set three episodes, we've talked about this a few times. They did like a Godzilla episode. They did like a Predator episode. What episode do you think this is inspired by? What did you think of this? It's a movie. Oh, I know you. I is an actor you love. Oh, um, he's right behind you, in the closet. Nick Cage. What yeah. movie did he do where he he got redone like his face and everything? Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, I'm gonna be mad when you have I seen it. I would assume so. Face off with John Travolta. Remember oh. when they switched faces? <laughs> I've actually not seen it. You've not seen it? How have you not <laughs> no. seen that movie? We've never done a Nicolas Cage retro. Wow, we got to do a commentary track on that. That is one of the best ones. But anyway, so in that one, he switches place uh, with a body. like It's like a criminal and a cop, and they switch places. And also in that thing, John Travolta, who's the good guy, goes in Nick Cage's body. He ends up in a prison, like a very similar situation where there's like guys kind of bugging and roughing up. Same thing in this over one. So I felt this was kind of a tribute to that. There, so. There's a lot of, you know, uh, inspiration that they take wholeheartedly into the Clone Wars. I'm The other day I asked you about if you've seen Moulin Rouge. And that was because the whole Duchess Satine thing is mm. completely just pulled from Moulin Rouge, especially because, you know, it's funny. Ewan McGregor and Obi-Wan Kenobi and all that stuff. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this episode, uh, that's good to know, and we'll have to do a commentary track oh, for Face for Off sure. for sure. I love that movie. But, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed Racco Hardin very much. He is from Conqueror Dawn. He is a Mandalorian. Mm. And uh, what else do I got? Uh, yeah, I like how they took him out, and they basically replaced him with Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan was in that bar, and he had to, that, like, kudos to him for acting when Anakin, like, gets him or whatever and he's like drunk and mm. it's like oh the jedi i already killed the jedi today <laughs> so well done but um i love when he was in the jail and you got to see like bosk and boba obviously paying their time out from when we last saw them yeah yeah and they come up in the next uh, next arc we'll mm-hmm. talk about a little bit yeah i got some stuff to say about boba and that boba the next episode yeah you love that episode don't you oh i liked it a lot yeah, oh, it's just, yeah. i have just fun things um there's at one point when I always just like to bring this up. They were doing the only one faking his death and Anakin was looking for fear. I can't remember if this was at that moment when he's trying to get the sniper or later on in the episode, but I still, so there's a part where the bike driver just speeds away and Anakin's trying to run and he can't get him. I always say, why did they ever introduce the force speed power in Phantom Menace? And then they've never got back to it. I wish, I think it's only like a quick, like, like Dodge force speed thing. It's not like a continual, Force like you know. <laughs> okay, but it's Obi-Wan like a force and Qui-Gon when you do that dash, right? But Obi Wan and Qui Gon ran 
so long in the Phantom Menace when they ran away from the droidy cars. They ran down an entire hall. No, we don't see them yeah, run down the whole yes hall. Yes, we do. No, it's one scene no. where they just dodge quickly to the side. I know because I just watched Phantom Menace no. the other day. And they, you they see just them. dodge to the side real quick. No, That's yeah, it. you think that. And then when the droid cars turn around the corner, they're shooting and you can see their bad CGI is still running. 100%. No. Anyways, that but yes, no. yes, it's a force no. run. I'll even show you at some point. No, uh, let's see. Yeah, I said this is f- the notes of ta- uh, Vader's score. Taylor's gonna love it. He did this episode's just like face off. Yeah, I'll give this episode a uh, just just a thumbs up. I I do really like. Uh, yeah, I'll give it. I give it two thumbs up. Yeah, well, I know you are because of the the Vader. Is that gonna motivate you to give it two thumbs up? No, I would maybe give it like a thumb and a half. Actually, I'll give it that. It was it was pretty good. I like all these ones. Uh, Let's go to episode. I really enjoy him trying to uh, insert himself with Cad Bane and Mm -hmm. uh, just that whole dynamic. Very entertaining. (laughs) Yeah, I thought uh, uh, Cad Bane says that later on when they like this arc's over, but. I thought he was going to call him out a lot sooner than he did because mm-hmm. he was like, oh, I wonder what's going on here. Uh, let's see. So having escaped from the prison, Obi-Wan, Cad Bane, Moral Val. Moral Val. Moral Val flee across the galaxy and pers- pursued by Anakin and Ahsoka. Obi-Wan must devise a way to warn his fellow Jedi to halt their chase without blowing his cover. Uh, what do you think about this episode? And you go first, because I'm going to see if I can find this Phantom Menace thing. He comes pretty close to killing, you know, the gang several times there. I like when they got their new gear and they got, a, you know, the different ship and all that. Uh, I'm, I'm amazed that the Jedi Council couldn't properly be like, Anakin, no, just stay put. We have other priorities. Or even do this when Anakin wasn't around Obi-Wan, you <laughs> yeah. know, like send Anakin away on a front lines battle and then have Obi-Wan fake get murdered and then relay the message to Anakin and say, you need to stay out there right now, but we will have a service. As we've seen from Attack of the Clones, though, he doesn't really listen to orders. Well, that was when he was a Padawan, though. Mm, right, he's a knight. As a Jedi Knight. So, yeah, he'll definitely not listen to orders now. When he was a Padawan, the lowest but level he, Yeah, but as a, a Padawan, you know, he can just ditch with his girlfriend. But as a Jedi Knight leading a battalion of clones, he can't just ditch that. No, he can't. Let's well, see here. Right. Oh, yeah. No, they ran down an entire hallway. Look look at this. Okay, so they're fighting the droid decas, and they dodge to the side real yeah. quick. And then look, they're and now down that's at the a end s- of the hall. Okay, no, that's a they're solid, the like, hall. there's a solid amount of time for them to full on sprint. <laughs> no. I could have made it down to the end of the no, hall by that time. Oh, you could in. Oh, that's yeah. such a lot. Oh, yeah. And they're still, I'm pretty sure they're, s- they're still moving. That's bull crap. Uh, I liked this episode. It didn't stand out like the other ones to me. Um, the uh, Ahsoka and what was his name? Mux or whatever. Lux. Lux. I was close. Yeah. Like that one stood out because it had some fun moments. This was more so as far as the arc. Like I really liked the first episode and then I really like. Uh, let's see. Because the next one is. Was it this one or the next oh, one that had the and I guess, tomb? I guess I lied. This episode we're doing is five, and then the next episode's four. Okay. Yeah, well, my bad. Because the next one is the box. That's the one that oh, I the re- next yeah. one's the box. Because all of them had something. <coughs> this was one of these good episodes that I say is kind of like just an action episode. But the first episode in this arc had the whole setup, right? Of like, oh, he's faking his death. Anakin's hurt, everything like that. This episode we do, I'm pretty sure, get the revelation that Anakin figures out that it's Obi Wan, right? And I do think you're right because of the kids' show. He's like, oh, he was lying to me. And they touch on that a little bit, and they do at the end when Obi-Wan and Anakin come face-to-face again. But in this episode, it was moved very quickly because I think he finds that at the end. But the first episode of this arc, it's the setup. The third one is this really fun, like the box we'll talk about in a second, just this really almost horror-ish, like um, trials and tribulations, just like a survivor of Jedi Bound or Star Wars Bound. Saw Hunters. Jigsaw's coming to it, Star Wars. Exactly. And then the last one's like the resolution with the big setup, the assassination, everything like that. You got Palpatine kicking around in there. With this, it was just to me, I, this is not filler. I think it was just to get us to episode three and episode four. There wasn't too many moments. Like I wrote down that there was a good conversation Anakin and Palpatine had. Because I was wondering, do you think Palpatine thought that Obi Wan was dead in this moment? Was no, he, no. I He's got either. his feelers out there. Mm-hmm. He knows what's going on. There's no, no one's playing Palpatine 
at all in this franchise. He's yeah, just wait until he meets Kylo Ren. Yeah. Oh, well, he might be playing Kylo. And he's gonna see no. He's gonna see Kylo with his shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I gonna say? So yeah, um, yeah, I liked their conversation just because it felt like uh, Paul Patine was kind of twisting his mind a little bit because also he's the one where he says, "Oh yeah, Obi Wan faked." Uh, later on, when he goes back to Obi Wan faked his death, and he's like, "Oh, that must have been your idea." See, yeah, he. This <laughs> is again. Uh, there's right? an opening and then Palpatine just sinks in and just takes advantage of it and then it pushes Anakin further away. I think it was a risky play though because I think it, at that moment it kind of works but also just makes Anakin feel like an idiot because he's like, oh, it must have been your idiot. He's like, no, it was the councils and always won. So it's just like, yeah, you're not as good but I liked it that he's kind of pointing out that, oh, Jedi Council, you know, doing some shady stuff th- which they have done. I don't think in the prequel movies they do a good job explaining, like I think in Last Jedi they try to do that, their vanity and everything which Taylor still doesn't know the uh, meaning of that vanity. word. Um, or, or not vanity. What's the other word? Um, hubris. <laughs> hubris, right, <laughs> right. Uh, um, but, uh, yeah, I think that's all I have to say on this episode. Other than there's one moment where Anakin is choking a bartender. It happens. To get information. Ahsoka does not question him at all and does not say a single thing. Are you going to question your father if he's choking a bartender? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to at least say, why did you do that? Why <laughs> did you go to the dark side? And that's where I do like the show, especially this last season, is probably I'd rank it as number one right now. I'd have to go back. We'll do rankings episode at the end. But I, I, I enjoy the show, but I still think when people say, oh, it totally fixes on the problems of the prequels. It really doesn't because I've talked about before. There's this. There's other inf- uh, instances where Anakin does bad stuff. That one time when he killed that guy and Obi-Wan was just like, Anakin, and he was unarmed. back Anakin. To him. Yeah, it's just that's where you can say it's still kitty, and that's fine. But that's why it just, to me, still doesn't fix it because there's holes with other characters. Just not like every other character, if they do something just – at the slight of being evil to the dark side, people are like, what are you doing? Why'd you do that? That's the way to the dark side. Anakin gets like fucking 10 free passes. So it's just, and that's where I wish that, okay, you could give him these free passes, but that's why I wish maybe people would, there'd be a scene where like, no, he's the chosen one. We just got to let him work it out. They just look past it. So Ahsoka, instead of even having a moment to even, and that could happen later on the show, but this could have been a moment to set up. We all know he's going to be Vader. He's going to turn to the dark side. Her being like, why did you do that? Like, how did you feel like it's, you're letting it get the best of you? But no, it's just, she just looks in horror and then walks away and it's like okay i get it. not even question him just well she he didn't just, kill him if he killed the bartender then ahsoka might have said something but they still Anakin. S- but they still say interrogation you don't use physical force as a jedi right so and he's done that multiple times in this series so well, it's kind of like obi-wan and ahsoka kind of just get used to it and let him do his that's, thing but that shouldn't be the way you know what happened that's how ted bundy became a serial killer people just say, oh we let ted just he, he used to kill these animals he'll be fine he's not gonna go any higher and then look where he's now mm. Uh, anything to say? I'm giving this one a um, thumbs up uh, for friends and enemies. You said you? Palpatine was it was a risky conversation. Yeah. I think you know Palpatine. Mm-hmm. He just he loves risky conversations. This is a man who is like, you know, Order sixty six didn't even happen yet, and he was dropping his pants to to Anakin. He's like, yeah, you know, yeah, use my knowledge. Risk, yeah. I beg you, I can save your wife from. Uh, permadeath, or what did yeah. he say? I can save your wife from certain death. Yeah. Oh, Perma- yeah. <laughs> permadeath. permadeath. I think most death is permadeath. Yeah. Well, not for Palpatine. <laughs> most, well, yeah, apparently not, <laughs> unless it's Matt Smith. Yuck. Which, uh, by the time this episode comes out, you guys might not even know what time we're recording this. It's like just over two weeks away, so it's crazy. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, the only risk. He all these risks were held for Palpatine except for Return of the Jedi. Trying to get Vader to kill his son. That was a risk that went too far. But it was a contingency. You probably knew Vader wouldn't kill his son. We'll find out in Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. But I bet he didn't because the way he screamed when he went down that shaft, that sounded like I, a you man. Know, that sounded like a man who Any man going down a shaft is gonna scream like that. But there's something different about it. There's <laughs> there's death screen and then there's just like a oh I really fucked up scream. <laughs> and that's the scream he had. Uh what are you giving friends and enemies? I'll uh, give it two thumbs up. Oh, my God. <laughs> I like this episode a lot. <laughs> wow. I did not even feel like that. <laughs> the box. Count Dooku invites some of the best bounty hunters in the galaxy, including Capane, and the steel disguised Obi Wan to compete in an obstacle course designed for Amaro Evolve. Morale <laughs> Evolve. <laughs> it's getting worse as we continue. <laughs> Morale Evolve, known, uh, known as The Box. With involvement in the pl- uh, in a plot to kidnap uh, <laughs> Chancellor Palpatine <laughs> as a reward as a reward for survival. So wait a second. As a reward for survival. After facing many challenges in The Box, Obi-Wan survives along with Cat Bane and three other bounty hunters. Cat Bane is appointed by Dooku to lead the kidnap operation against Palpatine on Naboo. 
really like this episode. I think for the most part it worked. I think there was a few times where it started to go into territory that I didn't know if it was Star Wars like, but it, it worked. It was just kind of the room. It was so, I guess Star Wars is high tech. It's just, I'd never seen something like this. So when I was seeing it, it was just clearly a kind of horror, like Taylor said, a saw episode where they put them there and there's all these traps and they got to figure it out. It was kind of Indiana Jones like. So I liked it. It was just initially like you have Count Dooku's like big face on the screen. I think it got a little too fantastical for me. So that's why I can't give it a full, I'd give it like a, a thumb in like a 75% way. It's almost a two thumb, but it just got a little too overwhelming at times for me to believe it. Um, I didn't know if I liked as well Obi-Wan being so good with the sniper. I know He just whipped that out of nowhere. Yeah, I know it's just like the force and I get it, but it just it felt too convenient for me, so that's another thing why I didn't uh I wouldn't give it a full two and thumb halfer, but I really enjoyed this episode. It was fun to see all the bounty hunters do what they do. I like seeing Cad Bane have some honor and actually saved him because Obi Wan had been saving their ass the entire episode, and then Cad Bane saved him back. Obviously, he didn't know it was Obi Wan, but I really liked all that. I loved when uh, what was the guy that was kind of messing with them? Like he was the ringleader, and then Count Dooku threw him in the Morale Val. Oh, or? was that him? The the guy that Obi Wan kills, or they kill because he fights in the. They fight at one point because because he he hits the switch to make Obi Wan fall. Cat Bane gets him, and then Cat Bane's like, "If you want to kill him, fight him like a man," you know. And they had that fight, and there's like fire around and everything like that. Right, I'm trying to remember who it was. Yeah, it was uh. something like bug looking bounty hunter. I like that, and I I liked that it was uh you know they didn't do any dark side uh, Obi Wan stuff in that moment. I thought they were gonna go there, but they didn't. So I liked that, and uh, yeah, just a basic episode, but a really fun episode of just bounty hunters together figuring out puzzles and pretty much just only one saving their ass a lot i i love that the prize is the kidnap counselor That's chancellor prize. Prize. so it's like all right i guess but uh yeah those are my thoughts on the episode and i would give it like i said a thumb and a like a 75 because i don't got any more notes um yeah this episode was pretty good i really enjoyed it i enjoyed the whole box concept i love seeing all the bounty hunters together uh no boba fett which is a shame he would have done so good in this scenario <laughs> i disagree <laughs> Um, Considering what happens to him in the episode about to come up, <laughs> he's still an idiot. Um, what else? Yeah, it was just it was a fun episode. I liked seeing Obi Wan, you know, get uh, saved by Cad Bane and them working together. I liked seeing him kind of lead the charge. Mm -hmm. I felt bad when every every time like a bounty hunter would die. There were the two brothers, bounty hunters, and one of them died, and I was like, oh, that kind of sucks. Now. You know, he doesn't really get the bragging rights of being, you know, the two feared brothers, no. bounty hunter brothers or whatever. Just the one feared brother. Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. Were there any? No, there weren't any droids, were there? No. No IG droids. That's a shame. You have anything else? I gave all my notes. No, I'll give it a good two thumbs up. <laughs> oh, wow. Two thumbs up. Um... Why do you gotta rock your chair back and forth? Why is this new thing? Need some do? oil in this chair, or you just gotta stop that. Uh, let's see. Uh, crisis on Naboo. <coughs> oh boy, we got a big paragraph here coming up. Supreme Chancellor Palpatine goes to Naboo, guarded by Jedi Knights. <laughs> Meanwhile, Cad Bane is and a still disguised Obi Wan and a pack of bounty hunters put their plan into action, but it fails when Obi Wan alerts the Jedi and Dooku, or Jedi and Dooku doesn't uh, rendezvous with them to collect his quarry. With the bounty hunters now in Republic custody, Obi-Wan wants to change back to his original self. However, when Obi-Wan realizes that uh, Dooku was eavesdropping via a hidden recorder <laughs> when he alerted Mace Windu and Anakin Skywalker, indicating a deeper conspiracy is still at hand. <laughs> Will Anakin be able to stop Dooku's plan before it's too late? Again, Wikipedia is just like, it gave so much away, but it won't give like the final two minutes away. Uh, what did you think about this episode? I love this episode. I think one of my favorite moments is when Anakin faces off against Dooku. It's a br awesome fight, Jedi fight scene. And really I, you well see done. Palpatine smiling. Yeah, you know, yeah. he's just he loves playing. You know, playing uh, Sheev the Palpatine. He's yeah. uh, he's just smiling because he wants to pit you know his his apprentices together. He likes seeing the minions. And if Anakin killed Dooku right then and there, maybe he would have engaged Order sixty six sooner than later. You know. I don't think that can't work because I don't I, – I guess Anakin's like uh, – I think for Anakin to fully turn, you need Padme to be pregnant. I think that's the – No, you just have to kill her. Mm, I disagree. Because she – whether because she was pregnant or not, because she, the he said you killed her in your anger. But here's – yeah, but here's the – 
here is the Lucas, I think, mind thinking. The reason he turns to the dark side originally is because he has vision that Padme's going to die and he wants to save her, right? So that's why I feel that she needs to be alive and pregnant. And if she just dies, I don't think that would turn him. I think the idea of him going to the dark side is supposed to be, I need to obtain this power. Once he goes to the dark side, it messes him up. In my opinion, poor writing. But I think uh, you, the idea is he has to be able to save her. So her, I, I think her life has to be put at risk. So I think if she just died, he honestly wouldn't turn to the dark side. I don't think in this era. But Palpatine could really put any dream into his mind, basically. He it could, could be but it her. might not work. It, I think it all depends, like you're talking about with Palpatine and the situation. I don't think if Anakin uh, killed Duke right there, he would just be like, okay, I'm pulling over 66 right there. I, I think he'd still think about it and sit around because... Dooku died, and he still waited at least a few days or a week at least to pull or 66, right? So I think he would still sit back and go, is this the time? And if Padme is still alive and there's no dreams or anything like that, and we don't know if that was Palpatine that put those visions in Anakin's head. That's never been canonized. I think it's a safe... Well, that's because true. Because canon it, I mean, of him did... being his dad has kind of been a thing where it's like him over Shmi, but I never took it that way. I just took it that Anakin is having forced visions about what's going to happen but the reason he's having those because obviously he's going to turn the dark side he's seeing that i never took it as palpatine put visions in the head because that's the exact same thing that happens right like he has visions yeah, of the exact well, same way kinda, she dies. i guess it's kind of like what qui-gon says too he can see things before they happen mm -hmm. interesting you can see the future so you don't think uh if he just cut off dooku's hands the palpatine wouldn't be like do it and then he would just cut off uh, dooku's head uh, no, because I think, again, the whole situation's different. There's more Jedis around, Obi-Wan's around. This was like a dire situation when he cut out Dooku's head, even though I don't think it was. So, I, and I think that even at that point, they're close, but I don't even know if they're close enough for him to do that. But other than they, Anakin's a loose cannon, so it wasn't, wouldn't really matter. I think they're pretty close at this point. I think Palpatine I, I, got in really close with them when he was a little boy on Tatooine. Oh boy, I'm not going <laughs> to touch that one with a 10-foot lightsaber pull. Uh, I really like this episode. This was the crescendo of everything. This was everything was coming together. Uh, you got Count Dooku in there with Anakin. Great uh, lightsaber fight. I love the setup as far as how I like when Cadbury finds out it's Obi-Wan. Oh, Obi-Wan, I have my suspicions. He was fucking pissed. Yeah, so it's just like a waste of a few weeks for poor Cad Bane. <laughs> um, I liked the setup of the recorder was in there. Dooku found out, waited a little bit, came in. I liked the the reveal of he goes in the room with Palpatine and then Dooku's just sitting right there. It felt like a very Dooku esque thing because sometimes I feel on the show they've made Dooku a bit younger and a bit more. I don't want to say careless, but a bit more adventurous than he is in the movies. He's a very stoic, like more older. Vigorous. Christmas. Yeah, where that's where I wish. And not even saying because it's animation they should do that. I just like the presence that Christopher Lee brings, and sometimes I feel like he's almost a little too young and maybe inexperienced. This Dooku, but this didn't feel like that. I feel like he's sitting here waiting for them to come. He has this fight scene with Anakin that's great where he's just like flowing throwing plates at him and using the chair to block I thought that was all really well done it's one of the better fight scenes in the series so that was great and then uh you know he had Palpatine but then Obi-Wan saved Palpatine and that's a that's the thing that is sad at the end of the day this whole mission for Obi-Wan is just to save the Palpatine and he should just like not done it you know obviously he didn't know what was going to happen but man if he could just let him get assassinated let him get caught I know it was all this plan but just a waste of everyone's time. So, well, it's like how they could have let the Xylo Beast kill Palpatine. It would have yeah. been all fine, you know. Yeah, no just the Xylo Beast took, took <laughs> out the great Palpatine and Duke. was just like, I don't know what's next. He had this Death Star. Apparently, this Anakin kid. Uh, the only note I have about this one is they do this thing like uh, bounty hunters. They have these cloaking devices that make people appear to be other people. So they put it on Palpatine to like knock him out and then switch bodies and everything like that. And at one point, one of them's the fake Palpatine. And it was weird because he just goes and decks Anakin. I feel like cause Anakin went to go check and he asked. I feel like Anakin didn't know for sure that was Palp like a fake Palpatine. He just outright punches him. And then what I didn't like was he just kept punching him for a little bit. And then Anakin chopped his arm off and then he's like, what's going on? But for a while, he just like Palpatine and the bounty hunter just like beat up Anakin. So I didn't like that. But um, for the most part, I thought this was a really fun episode. Lots of great stuff. And I despite that last flaw, I was small enough to look past. I would give it a, a two stars or two thumbs. Well, when you look at an episode like this, you have Palpatine basically attempt uh, on his life, which gives him more power because the Separatists are getting, obviously, 
into a position where they had bounty hunters to assassinate Palpatine. So in the Senate, it just gives him more emergency powers to do what he needs to do. Mm. So not only is it a ploy to, sure enough, boost you know his political standing, but it's definitely a ploy to make him more powerful in the Senate to the point where he is the Senate. Two <laughs> thumbs up. And drop that two thumbs up. Uh, that's it for today. We're going to do the next episode next time, obviously, so you can t- stay tuned to that. Uh, Taylor, you got anything to say? No, just these these episodes were really, really good. I really yeah. enjoy uh, Moralo Evol and the uh, Rocco Hardeen guys. Cad Bane chemistry was pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. And Some unique episodes in here, too. Diff- oh, uh, that's yeah. what I like the most. Change of pace for most of these. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yeah, Taylor, where can they find us on the interwebs? Oh, with your internet connection, you can find us in the search bar, Facebook Geek for Space podcast with tons of awesome stuff, lots of Star Wars stuff, like lots and lots of Star Wars. Yeah, by the time this comes out, I'm not sure if we've finished it or whatnot, but you can go back. We've done reviews for Mandalorian. Uh, all our Star Wars commentary tracks got put in the back of the feeds. There's a Last Jedi commentary track coming out. There's tons of stuff. So that's why you just want to head over to the description down below. Whether you're watching our video or audio feeds and everything's there, head over to Patreon 2020. We're going to be doing lots of early exclusive stuff there, so you're going to like that. And, uh, yeah, next week is uh, we're telling some good episodes, but finally uh, Darth Maul's coming in. Spoiler. Mm. So I'm very excited to talk about that. So... Until next time, may the force be with you. Always.